an Elizabethan communion cup. This silver communion cup, or chalice, is used in the rite of Holy Communion. It was made in 1571 during the reign of the first Queen Elizabeth. It is significant not only for this church, but for the story of all English churches. It represents a divergence in religious practice and is a symbol of the moment when the English Reformation reached a milestone with the settlement of religious practice and doctrine and a point from which there was no turning back to Roman Catholicism. In 1534, Queen Elizabeth's father, King Henry VIII, broke with the Roman Catholic Church and declared himself head of the Church in England. In the years that followed, the Church, which had previously been independently wealthy and powerful, was brought directly under the rule of the King. The break initially took place because the Pope refused to grant the King a divorce to enable him to remarry, but it unleashed into England ideas and challenges to establish Catholic doctrine, known as Protestantism, that had long been building across the continent. Growing literacy, the invention of the printing press in the previous century, and the consequential increase in access to the Bible and widely circulating written material raised challenges to church doctrine and customs that had existed for centuries. Henry's son, who succeeded him in 1547 as Edward VI, was far more strongly Protestant in his outlook than his father, giving effect to significant change in the liturgy, the words and manner of worship. The king's youth gave the expectation of a long reign and that the changes would be embedded, but Edward died after only six years as king and was succeeded by his elder sister Mary, who had remained a devout Catholic. As queen, she set about reversing the changes. Mary's reign was also short, and when she died in 1558, her half-sister Elizabeth came to the throne. Elizabeth was a Protestant, but she had little taste for exploiting divisions between Protestants and Catholics, nor for the persecutions of those who had resisted change as had taken place during the preceding reigns. Ever the astute politician, she declared that she had no intention to use a glass to see into men's souls, and maintained at first a level of ambiguity in her reimposition of crown supremacy over the church. This ambiguity worked to her advantage politically, not only at home but also in her relations abroad. As a result, in the first decade of her reign, religious practices tended to vary depending on local circumstance and tradition. Elizabeth's formal excommunication by the Pope in 1570, however, forced her hand. Having resisted its publication, she agreed to a statement of doctrine known as the 39 Articles, and through a succession of laws forced uniformity in church practice. Often called the Elizabethan Settlement, this was far from a full-throttled version of Protestant doctrine, and far less radical than changes begun by her brother. But it did assert that church doctrine should be based in Scripture, the importance of a liturgy in English rather than Latin, and the rejection of Catholic teaching on matters such as purgatory. One very distinct difference between the Roman Catholic and the New English Church concerned the Mass or Holy Communion, through which Christ's sacrifice is commemorated using the two elements of bread and wine. In the Roman Catholic Church, only the priest took both bread and wine. The rest of the congregation, the laity, were allowed only bread. The cup for the wine, known as the chalice, was therefore a small vessel, as it needed to contain only enough wine for one or two people, the priests. The 39 Articles established that there was no biblical justification for restricting the distribution of wine to the priest alone. Both elements should be distributed, and the cup of wine shared with all. The small Roman Catholic style of chalice would hardly be sufficient to hold enough wine for an entire congregation, and therefore had to be replaced by a much larger communion cup like this one. It is therefore not unusual to find communion cups dating from the 1570s in old churches, this one in Bitten is particularly beautiful and unusual as it is still in use to this day. It is also valuable, which is why it is locked away, and unless you are particularly fortunate, you have only this picture to look at. <laughs>